Oh, hey, check it out. Hey, fellas. Hey, we're back. Hello and welcome to another. Uh, yeah, you know what? I think we'll do it different tonight. What do you think? Ted, yeah. I, think you've been, I think Ted's been here long enough, Ted. I'm going to let you handle everything tonight. Jeez, I don't know if I've got anything prepared. I don't know. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Carvers and Creators, a weekly demonstration and discussion with sculptors, carvers, multi-talented artists from around the world. If you're a fan of the show and you enjoy what we do, make sure to give us a like and follow on the platform you're watching on. And let us know in the comments where you're watching from. Let's be artists. He's an artist oh, and sculptor wait, in Boston, Mass. Wait, wait, you guys, you're the artists. You're the guests. We, we are? Oh, shit. This is crazy. All right. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. There you go. He's an artist, a sculptor from Boston, Mass. The judge on season three of Outrageous Pumpkins. It's Paul Dever. Hola. Hey, Tal. Hey, everybody. Go. And an artist and sculptor from Tucson, Arizona, and a Halloween Wars finalist, the man, the myth, the legend, Matt Harper. And my Hello, name, everybody. Wow. There you go. Great. My name is Ted Haynes. I'm a homemaker, stay at home dad, amateur <laughs> monster maker. My spare time, I like to tease the park pigeons. Uh, hang out with my local Rotary Club peeps. Uh, return shopping carts that have just been left in the uh, parking lot. And in my spare time, I love to make Halloween props. And that's me. <laughs> You're a philanthropist. This is great. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, nice job, Ted. Yeah. Well done, you, you must have practiced that or something. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't have anything written down. Nothing. No, it was it just <laughs> all, all, all out of my head. You see my eyes darting. It's like I'm on SNL. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ted, we appreciate you doing the opener. You did a hell of a job with Maddie. I'd give, him a, I'd give him a 9.9 because there is no such thing of, as perfection. 11 out of 10. Right? No, no. 11 out of 10. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Ted, as you know, you've been here a bunch. At yep. this point in the show, we like to do a little rewind and see what we both did last week for our challenge. And last week's challenge with uh, the lovely folks from Grey House Studios was a, what was it? A uh, Something Frankenstein. Yeah. Uh, what was he? Ted, you know what it was. I don't know what it was. I know it's a cheat sheet. Just grottled or something. I forget. It's not yeah, no, hold on. I got it right on the wheel. Hey, um, distraught Frankenstein. Just, thank, thank you, Ted. Thank you. Appreciate it was on the notes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matt, this is your Frankie. You you went the same path I did, and you put you chopped those ears right into the pumpkin, right? Yeah. I, so I, I started with a really thick pumpkin, and I, I was really happy about it because um, uh, whenever you can do that and not have to glue them on, it, it's it kind of looks really cool. If you look at it from the side, it looks probably pretty weird because it's kind of mm. elongated, but it it. The effect was good, and I like just kind of like the kind of clean, basic lines on this guy. But um, yeah, I guess I'm I'm happy with it. It's it's all one piece. It's it's great, and I doing the. It's almost like a perspective without the tilt, really, because, like you said, if you look on the side, it's there's so much material behind it because it it's a round object. You know what I mean? You have to get yeah. rid of everything that wants to be shown. And yep. I don't know how you close you came to the middle, but I was it was like cellophane thin of material <laughs> left. When I was, the thing was so springy it wanted to like fall left and right. Oh wow! Awesome forms, yeah. man. The mouth is Thank crazy. You. It was a lot of fun making it. I, and I usually um, we've gotten Frankenstein a few times, and and I, I, I cringe because I'm like okay stitches or whatever. So I just wanted to go relatively simple. But when I saw yours, I I mean I'm I hate to say it, Paul, but I'm going to throw this at like top five. Oh, come on. Your top five. Epic. Oh, thank you, pal. Appreciate the, it. The, 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 the skin, the, the, you know, the sunken eyes, the, the, every bit of it. And the fact that it's all one big piece like that, like, like mine, is crazy. Really love it. That was out of frustration. Really. I was having such a, like you were saying, it's that pain in the ass. It's gotta be Frankenstein. And you know, there's certain things. There's only a couple things you got to hit. I mean, you could really carve whatever you wanted to and throw some bolts on, on the neck and a scar and be like, well, it's, you know, it's different Frankenstein. Yeah. But I just started hacking away and be like, I'm just, you know what? I'm going to put ears on. I'm, I'm not going to glue ears on. I'm going to carve them in. And then as I'm going, I'm like, shit, this is actually going to work. 
<laughs> like another two hours of work to clear all the material. Like from the side, you could, you know, the thing was this wide of a pumpkin round. Mm -hmm. So I had to take everything and i had carved another face on the back being economical because i had a workshop like the day before so i'm like oh that's oh, already here i'll just spin it and work on the other side so it had two oh. faces and it's pretty cool do we get to see the back side whose back side i'm sorry ted i came in late Who's to the conversation this is a mm -hmm. pg show i'm i don't have a picture on me i will send you a i will dm you a picture of my backside i mean it's backside <laughs> oh, uh, thank you the personal but you know what's funny <laughs> This picture block Paul Depp. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, he, smartest thing you could have ever done. It got me in trouble with Facebook because I changed my profile picture to me holding it, and they flagged me for posting like an uh, inappropriate or like uh, it, uh, what do you call it? Like a disturbing photo. Oh, like I was holding a severed head. They almost blocked my account. That that is what what a nice that's a badger red badger of honor. Or it's crazy. Yeah, watch map blow me up. I got the picture, I'll show you. There you go. Let's take a look. Watch no, this. You this I, I had no idea at first. Yeah, that's some sort of weird AI that I can't tell you how many times on Instagram I've gotten the same thing where it's that like, is oh, we're the gonna weirdest thing. Yeah. That's inappropriate. Half of the stuff I see on Facebook is like, why am I seeing this in the first place? Like, I, I don't ever want to see this again. So, well, yeah. So did you that. pull it down off of Instagram or did you like write no, it? No, I was I put I just threw that one on Facebook just to just to throw oh, it up because like a cool pro temporary profile picture for Halloween. Yeah. Oh, okay. So for no, Facebook. I, I, no, yeah. I, they they put it through. Okay. I, it's it's all set. It just cropped it. Somebody down figured out it's a pumpkin. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, well, the you're people figured out it was a pumpkin. Stand. Unbelievable. Yeah. Can you believe that stuff? That's well, crazy. not fair. Not fair. You know what time it is now? Oh, no. Maddie can throw up the slide there, and we can introduce it a little bit. Oh, oh this, you mean this slide? I mean, well, I mean, Ted can tell us more about it right now if he wants to. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we need to introduce the fourth member of Carvers and Creators tonight, responsible for carving challenges. It's the wheel. It's the sinner spinner. So, uh, wow. give everybody a couple of minutes, right, to grab their tools, and yeah. Uh, well, Abs well, absolutely. Let's go run around the house all here and find a way. Our carve tonight. That's all right. Awesome. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna spin this bad man yeah, pajama twice. Spin. I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. We gotta spin. I know. <laughs> I do it all the time. I, I actually, I'll sit there and stare at the screen and go, I don't know what we do next. <laughs> I was, I was about ready to go. Let's get to the booze. Yeah, you, you're like, good night, everybody. <laughs> good night. It's time to drink. <laughs> all right. So two spins. As we know, if anybody, if you're watching the show and you're new to it, thank you for joining us. The wheel, we will spin twice. First choices we have for tonight are witch or warlock, werewolf, guest choice, undead, fantasy animal, vampire, demon, Frank, goblin, and aquatic. In the off chance it lands on Frank, we'll make a judgment call whether we're going to do a respin. Second spin will be confused, distraught, shocked, guest choice once again, crazy, devious, excited, furious, sad, or flustered. And this being the Halloween episode, let's hope for um, something Halloweenish. Yeah, Halloweeny. Halloweeny. Halloween <laughs> that right. said, here we go. Goblin. Very Goblin. Very. I like it. I can do goblins. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. Guest choice on the emotion. Ooh, Liz Baines. Devious. And it's, it, it can be, it's guest choice. It can be anything out of your mind, too. It doesn't yeah. have to be constrained to the wheel. I, I, kind of, I, like, I like shocked. I like that. Shocked goblin. Shocked goblin. Oh, that's a good one. All, All right. right. All right. No, well, I think there. I was ever on with you guys. I think it was goblin. Was it last time, too? Yeah. Wow. No, no. Last time it was Frankenstein. I think it was back in December. Last time I was on with you guys, about 10 months ago. Yeah, wow. it's been a while. Too long. Well, now, Ted, long. now's the time. <laughs> <laughs> now's the time when we give everybody a couple minutes to get their tools because we, you know, we got to get oh, yeah. to our, go, go get our your tools, tradition, if you will, on Carving and Creators. <laughs> That's right. 
Well, uh, let's see. Spin. Let's think. Uh, a couple of minutes. Grab the tools. Let's see. And I'm not reading this at all. It's uh, <laughs> I don't know. Something about yeah. Uh, drinks. Carving oil. Oh, that's what you need. I love it. What's love everybody it. drinking tonight? <laughs> exactly right, sir. Well, you can't carve or sculpt without no. your carving oil. Us, you know, it's not because you know we like to drink beers and have a good time. It's generally for our joints. We do a lot of carving this time of year. They get a little stiff. This frees us up. Also gives us a little fun uh, inspiration to, to do some carving. So let's start with the man, the myth, the legend, Matt Harper. Holy crap. All right. So I have what they have. Uh, it's, a, it's a Barrio Rojo. It's a, um, it's a red uh, style, oh. style amber ale from Tucson, Arizona. I mean, what the living hell? But it's probably delightful since it's not an IPA. Anything but an IPA. Ted, what about you? You know, I, I, I grabbed something real quick since uh, last time I talked to you guys. I've, I've moved out of the Burbank area and into the central coast of California. And uh, so I wanted to get something local-ish here. So this is a slow cider, coastal haze. Nice. And it's a cider here from the uh, San Luis Obispo uh, County from uh, San Luis Obispo, California. So wow, there you Beautiful. go. Coastal. It's a, a nice little unfiltered dry cider. Ooh, and dry as well. 6.8 alcohol by volume, gluten-free. Oh, look at you. Very, Very important awesome. for the gluten I, you know, intolerance. Yeah, some folks, that's fine. Very awesome. Nice. How about you, Paul? What are you, what are you yeah, sipping Paul, tonight? Well, I got a good – I mean, the can is great, so I'm hoping big things. So it's from Branch, Branch Blade Brewing. That's like – um. Uh, tongue twister for me for whatever reason. Okay. All right, come on, get it in there. There we go. There you are. That's out of Mighty Keen, New Hampshire, and it is called "I Just Want to Be Pure," but pure. <laughs> and if you've ever seen oh. "It's Always Sunny," the episode where Frank <laughs> wants to be pure and he rolls around in the the hand sanitizer. So it's, <laughs> we did a Frankenstein last week. We did a Frank, right? So I got Frank on the can, and it's a um, it's a sour ale. Uh, a Bonnie Berry Sour Ale. And yeah, it's from Branch Blade Brewing. And I'm going to give a shout out to the illustrator, Kristen Girard, I believe it is. And then there you go. Here's her uh, Instagram handle. We'll give her a little shout out. There you oh, go. Yeah. If you can see Look that. At there you that. Go. Nice. So cheers. It's great. Very Here's good. Morning. Maybe buy the beer. Oh, Clean. it's nice. Clean. All right, guys. Clean. Cheers to a successful carving Clean. and uh, a good time. Cheers to Ted. Thanks for joining us and stepping up to the plate. Thanks Holy for having crap. me. MC and everything. This is, you, I guess you've been on before, so you kind of know what to say without a script, I, which is great. I kind of know the shtick, but I was nervous nonetheless. <laughs> you have every well, right to be. You ace the, te you ace the test. You Thank pass you. the flying color. Oh, look, look at that look little kid. Look at that little, that little kid, the little baby <laughs> Teddy Haynes. Little We're going to. When I say we like to start at the beginning, we're actually starting at the beginning. This is your life, Ted Haynes. That's not far from the beginning there. <laughs> but it does but warm it, my heart to know that it all starts with the Muppets. It does. It, it yeah. did. It did. My, uh, my buddy at, uh, well, when I, when I worked at Legacy Effects, we had this, this board up um, down in Fabrication, and we just kind of encouraged everybody to bring in a, uh, a kid photo and hang it up. So I had this one up and uh, everybody would bring in a kid photo. You can guess who's who and whatever. But my buddy, Jeff always made fun of this hand that's hanging down. He said, that looks like a chimpanzee hand. It's so long. And, and if you can't see my feet in that shot, but this is like, I'm about nine years old. And I was just growing really weird. Like my feet would grow. My hands would grow, <laughs> flop around. <laughs> yeah. Nope, that's my that's my Kermit, about nine years old there, and asked my mom to teach me how to sew so I could make a Muppet. Oh my at god! At nine years old, that's insane. At nine years old, yeah. And you didn't so. have a beard, I noticed back then. That's that's weird. No, I was shaving though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I went to I went to private Catholic school, so they didn't allow beard, so I was shaving at nine, of course. Ah, okay, that makes sense. That makes total sense. Makes total sense. Let's talk about this because. Paul and I are absolutely insane yes. about about this. So tell us, just tell us the name of it, and then your inspiration. And then I, I think we have a little show we can actually take a look at. Yeah, there's um, 
that's a, a Baba Yaga house. And uh, I, uh, I got inspired to do this. I follow on Instagram a group of folks um, called uh, Dark Arbor Lodge. It's just a, a group of uh, makers and fabricators and really incredible artists. And one of their artists that is part of the lodge had built a uh, Baba Yaga house. And, you know, Baba Yaga is a witch. It's like a Slavic, you know, kind of Ukrainian, uh, Romanian, Germanic, you know, that type of uh, part of the world. Yeah. And uh, her house is enchanted, whatever, and it walks on on chicken legs. And so my concept behind this, and the Dark Arbor Lodge just put out like a kind of a challenge to anybody who follows it. It's like make a Baba Yaga hut. And so I, I drew this up and. The, uh, you know, I, I just love the idea of the hut and everything, but everybody kind of usually makes it with like literal chicken legs, mm -hmm. bird legs. And, uh, you know, I, I wasn't that into like just the, the literal legs and I, I wanted it to kind of make sense. And so I designed it to look like a vulture, like a bird of prey or something like that. So, you know, it was like an enchanted you know, a cottage in the middle of the woods, you just rose up out of the dirt and walked on roots and, and, you know, tree stumps and whatever. And then of course the, you know, the hump, the back is the back of the character. And then the, the fallen trees in the back of the tail. And then the, the little in the front is the head of the, the bird. So that was the whole idea behind that. So yeah, I've been noodling around with this for literally a couple of months and at first I wanted to make it just solely. Well, at first <laughs> my wife really was like, Oh my God, you really going to do that. I wanted to make it as a costume. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. You want to come in at about seven feet tall. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, quickly, one of, one of, one of the dark Arbor lodge uh, artists is a uh, um, fellow by the name of Chris Wallace. And anybody in the effects industry is going to know Chris Wallace's name. Um, a very famous uh, effects artist, creature effects artist, his, been in the industry for decades and brilliant guy but uh he had done a costume and it was a beautiful costume and uh i thought well i don't have a lot of room in my new little shop right now so i better i better scale down my build but uh i i wanted to kind of try to make the whole thing as much as possible out of paper so the whole thing started with just a cardboard base um and like a construction board uh for the all the little tiles all the shingles uh the siding all that kind of stuff the uh the base is paper clay um the legs were a, a base of pvc pipe and, and just uh crumpled up construct or um cr crumpled up a uh, butcher paper that i used to cover my table in the shop so i would okay. like wad it up and hot glue it in and you know, tape it up, spray glue it in. So it just kept on doing that. And then all the other little roots and all that sort of stuff of the the fallen trees. And that's that's all paper as well that I would just sit and twist and twist and, you know, glue wow. those and, and make all the trees. So for the most part, it is paper. But then I did go in with some foam clay, did the chimney rocks out of foam clay. I did the, the foundation rocks out of foam clay. Um, and then just collected a lot of sticks and things like that around the yard um, that make up the the little porches and all that sort of thing. So um, it's it's nearing completion. It's very very close to being done. This uh, this Sunday in in Los Osos, the city I live in now, they're having an Oktoberfest. I'm going to have my booth at the Oktoberfest here. So it's basically my Monster Palooza okay. booth. Oh, cool. And so we'll see how that goes <laughs> in a small community you know, a monster booth in the middle of the uh, classic car show yeah. and brought works <laughs> and I like to have a monster booth there. So for I'm Halloween hoping... though, Ted, you'll be the draw. You will be <laughs> the biggest draw there. I, I hope so. It's going to be fun. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm posted done on this fellow and I thought I would at least show folks oh, what, yes, it's looking, what it's looking yeah, like. Let's right take a look. Oh, I mean, I'll zoom in on you, Ted. Uh, Matt, I think he might get the key to the city on yeah. Sunday. They're, they're not going to. They're not, yeah, exactly. Holy Moses. Holy Jesus, that's huge. Yeah, it's not small. I don't like the word small. So, yeah, you've got all the little the twigs and things I was talking about. Got this little basket out the front that way I kind of envisioned that uh, Baba Yaga herself would come out of the hut. 
you know, here there's a little door in here and walk down the stairs and through her uh, front hut here and jump into this basket because Baba Yaga flies around uh, in a pestle wielding a mortar. So I thought this would kind of be her pestle that she would jump into this and fly around. Oh, uh, but then cool. it, a lot of moss, these really great little uh, miniature pumpkins here are actually seed pods. I can't remember what the name of the pod is. Uh, but, uh, and then uh, I don't know if this will show up on camera or not, but it's got little flickering LED lights. Yeah, up in the top. Yeah. Yeah, I can see them in the windows. Definitely. Here and in this lantern and the windows up in the head. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Made wow. all the little. I got this really great little uh, paper punch that punches uh, oak leaves and, and maple leaves. And so I hand glued all these little leaves on the trees and. So uh, this is this been a ton of fun building this guy. So I'll do a I'll do a nice little proper uh, photo shoot with it and get it all up on on Instagram as soon as it's completely done. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. The one thing you can't see up there is a really great weather vane um, that my wife did. We just got a, a laser cutter, and uh, she laser cut this really great um, weather vane, and then she also did all of the. Uh, all of the windows. I originally had the windows all made out of um, cardboard as well. Wow. And uh, I wasn't happy with them. And right in the middle of doing it, our laser cutter came in. And it was a relatively inexpensive cutter. And she basically had the windows designed and cut about two hours after setting up the machine. So oh that was all. So we, nice little laser cut windows, got the flicker lights going in there. I just figured out yesterday how to do my wiring because uh, I melted some wires, almost blew up a couple of AA batteries because uh, I'm not I'm not a wiring guy. You know, back in the in the shops when I was working in the shops like Legacy, K and B, any of the places, you've got an electronics department. Yeah, and you just they do it all. You just kind of take it down there, and I've got a really great friend, uh, Rick Allenson, who. Uh, has done a lot of electronics work for me over the past several years. And I'm, we've known each other for decades, but I, I called him right away yesterday and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, man. <laughs> Send me a picture, show me some video. And he got, he's like, Holy smokes. You got it running in a loop. You got the electricity just going right back into your batteries. That's why they're heating up. Take them out of there. They could blow up. <laughs> oh, no way. <laughs> That's why you're melting wires. So he drew a quick diagram. And of course, as soon as I saw the diagram, it's like, yeah, I knew that. <laughs> I'm, an, I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, like how, how possibly bad could it be? Just little batteries. It's not doing it. And of course, uh, well, I, mean, I guess those little double, they still just, the ends could pop off them. And then you got yeah. battery acid just oozing out of there. And they, they can, kind of, you know, especially if they blow up in front of you, you know, or on your hands. Yeah, that's you know, that's not good. That's none bad. of it. None of it's good. None of it's good. Yeah, it's not like a car battery blowing up in your face, but it's you know. still uh, scary. But yeah, yeah, this is a progress shot. I love the shingles, man. Yeah, I know. That's, yeah, that looks like a whole, whole lot of work. Whole lot of work. Yeah, Maddie, go to. I want to. I want to get. I want to get onto some of the other things like this one. What was this for? Was this just for Halloween? No, no, that was um, that's another uh, character at Legacy Effects that we did for Goosebumps Two. Uh, oh. Haunted Okay. And, uh, the fellow I just mentioned, Rick Allenson, and I, we were down in uh, Georgia for two and a half, almost three months shooting that film. Um, wow. Wrangling all the characters and creatures that we had built at Legacy. And that's the final character. And that's actually me inside of there. So, oh, yeah. I can tell. I can tell. The whole, it looks like there you go. You can see it. Yeah. Now, of course, the green arms and the green poles hanging out, and that's all removed in post. Right. Um, there's a scene where I, the character comes alive and walks out into the street and almost gets hit by a car. And but that was interesting because I was doing that stunt completely, almost completely blind. And oh. uh, I'll have to throw up some video on my Instagram because my buddy Ray uh, recorded it, and it's take one, two, three, four, five, whatever like that, and. Uh, Every time Rick is going, and the demise of Ted, take two. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was speaking, that was really speaking character. of characters. Um, this oh. isn't that long ago. You guys, you and in your in your bride made this, right? 
Yes. Um, Alone and I worked on this off and on. We got this job right at the, the top of um, COVID, you know, right after lockdown. Um, mm-hmm. We had a, a, a producing couple that came to us. They were um, putting together this kid's TV show or like a, like a YouTube show. And it's, it's yet to come out. But I basically told them um, we were in the middle of just starting all these PlayStation characters as well. And then between that, I had a television show, a couple of commercials. And um, I said, I really want to do this project for you. And it was on a really tight budget. And I said, I'm only going to be able to work on this in between projects. And they said, that's okay. We're not going to need them for about a year and a half or so. Oh. And so we, we'd started that. We actually finally shot this, I think in August, June, wow. something like I, can't, I honestly can't remember when we shot it, but we, we finished it up and that was in our Burbank shop, finished it up. Um, it was shipped off to uh, Austin, Texas. And then we shot that in the middle of their heat wave in Austin, Texas, when it was like 103, 109 degrees. And oh, I played the blue character. So this is for a show called the Shoopy and Doopy show. And uh, Doopy is the blue fellow and Shoopy is the yellow. And uh, the uh, producers came to us, came to us with um, just a couple of really rough drawings of the characters um, that they had done themselves and, you know, not necessarily – artists or designers, but they had a concept of what they really wanted and colors. And, and so, um, I just jumped on it and said, well, do you really, you know, you want me to design the characters? Do you have an artist? And he said, Oh, no, absolutely. Whatever you think you can do. And oh, so wow. then I was responsible for actually designing the characters. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I basically was responsible for building like the body pods, the shapes. Mm. And then my wife alone is, she comes from a world of, you know, fine costuming and figure finishing or, you know, finishing costumes mm-hmm. and uh, mascot costumes. She had worked for a company that did all of the uh, DreamWorks characters for like cruises and stuff and oh, was wow. really used to working with furs and fake furs and all that kind of stuff. So she did all the coverings. Um, she built that beautiful hat on Doopy. Um, she did the feathers on Shoopy there, the hair uh, uh, covered with shoes. Did all the great shoe work there, um, so she's just an expert at like covering and, and patterning, um, and and trying to make these characters look as seamless as possible. In the meantime, you know, I was sculpting the shoes and sculpting fingers and uh, gluing the the body pods together, making the eyes, um, things like that, and just trying to figure out some of the mechanics of it since it was all, as they say, like a uh, actor actuated. So the mouths do right. open and close. And those wow. are basically like um, bicycle brake handles that are inside the arms that you can okay. like squeeze and pull. So they've got they've got like an audio track that they're playing on set. You can hear the track, and so it's really easy because the mouth is just bop 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 bop. Mm-hmm. And there's no lip sync or anything like that. So even if it's off a little bit, it doesn't matter. And it's all a kid show. So yeah, um, right. and the target audience is like you know three four years old. You know two three four. Yeah. So, so far it's shaping up to be a really neat show and it's, it's like morality tales and, uh, um, just a lot, a lot of teaching, a lot of like, you know, really positive, you know, how to deal with your feelings and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's oh, just, great. Really, really neat show. yeah. So do, that you, was do, really- you get, do, you, do you get any kind of credits because you're the designer? I mean, are you, do you I mean, are you, yeah. you going to be um, in the, Okay. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll definitely be in the credits. I don't know what kind of credits they'll have necessarily on YouTube, but um, but I'm just thinking um, of like credits of like I mean because you help design the actual you know characters in the thing. I mean you know yeah, that's something we've talked about. So I mean that's um that's a potential in the future, but we'll see if it cool. if it turns into Barney the dinosaur, then that'll yeah. be great. <laughs> yeah, the next thing you know, you're yeah. uh, you're rolling in hundred dollar bills. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't want to play devil's advocate here or, you know, rain on your parade, Ted, but it sounds a lot like you stole this show and made Matt a blue monster and me a little yellow guy. Cause this show is all about tales of morality and um, creativity. <laughs> here, here, it even looks like Matt. It just looks like a yeah. big hairy Matt. It does. <laughs> it does. And you have the same uh, feather things in your hair. Oh, yeah. Man. Well, you know, yeah. Just seems a little close to home, Ted. I don't know. <laughs> I, you know, I might have taken some inspiration. 
Yeah. Not. Really. From the, the folks I know. Speaking of, uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to actually shift gears because um, we, we, we talked about it a little bit in pre-show, but one of the things you're really, really uh, excelling at lately is, is all of your work in, uh, in your 3D printing stuff. So um, we got a few pictures oh, to, to kind of talk through some of the, but love, tell us about what, what, what are we looking at here? Now, uh, when you say I'm excelling, the people, you, you. the people who worked with me excel in this. You know, I've, right. got, I've got a small shop and, uh, you know, I, I like to bring my friends on board and help me with these projects. And we did a project uh, last year called I'm a Virgo. It's uh, Boots Riley, the director, producer, writer, um, did a show and it was on Amazon Prime. And uh, we were responsible for building all of the half scale characters on the show. So this character uh, by the name of Cootie in the show is, uh, I think, like a 19, 20 year old kid who grows to the height of 12 feet tall. And so when the actual actor, you know, who's just an average height fella has to interact with other actors, they're, they're portrayed by these half scale puppets that basically they shoot over the shoulder of the puppets to uh, help give him scale. Cause he's, he's working off of a, a half scale set as well. And so okay. what we did is uh, a friend of mine, Peter Luong and myself kind of traveled around the country doing scans of our main actors. So, you know, they would become available whether they were in LA, I think we went down to New Orleans and um, Georgia, New York, a couple other places, upstate New York, um, and would scan all of the performers. And then this is where the real artistry comes in is uh, uh, my very good friend, Jim Springham, uh, is a digital artist and James would uh, take the scans then, clean those scans up in ZBrush. Because, you know, when you scan hair, beards, all that kind of stuff, you end up with big digital holes, you okay. know, for the character. So all of this, all of this noise, you know, like the ears behind the ears, scans are never perfect, no matter what, no matter what budget, no matter what film, you're never going to come up with a perfect scan. Mm -hmm. And so James would uh, take these scans clean them all up. And what we then did, instead of printing out the positives and molding those, we went straight to the molds and we printed, we 3D printed the molds. And that's what, that's what we're looking at here. Is it that's the 3D printed right mold? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's one of the, the character, um, the actor Mike Epps. So that's a, a, a 3D printed mold. So we had the front and back of the mold we had two core pieces. So there's a, a, a core inside the, the head, the skull, and there was a core inside for the shoulders, and then there was a base plate. So five pieces in all. Some molds were actually more complex. And uh, so they were all five piece molds. And then we would pour silicone in through a, a spout on the back of the mold um, that would go in and then the, the skull core would actually stay in there. And then we had little, little cores for the eyes and everything too. We'd pull those out. And in this, uh, another company made these uh, really great eyes for us called fourth seal. That's the name of the company. And they made these beautiful half scale eyes. So we, you know, yeah. whenever we would go for these scans, we had to take 360 photos of, um, the actors, you know, walking all around them, close ups on their heads, their ears, their eyes, all that kind of stuff, yeah. um, to get them, you know, to let James have that information so he could sculpt them. And uh, and then we, yeah, printed out those molds. And I think we did 12 or 13 characters. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Just super proud of that, of that, uh, yeah. that whole project. Because we had so many, I mean, a very small group. It was myself, my wife, um, James Springham, Jasper Anderson, and Alana Suen. And uh it's funny. It's like the same crew. It's like we, uh, when we did our Aurora Frankenstein a couple of years ago, that was the yeah. same crew. It was, it was Jasper, Alana, my wife, um, uh, James, I think was in on that for a short bit myself, of course, and then Tom Woodruff. Um, you know, but it's, you know, when you, when you got a crew that are great friends of yours and are all fantastic artists, it's like, you just, you just want them around you all the time. Christian says, uh, "Ain't that the truth? Scans are more work than people realize." I totally. I mean, I, I haven't d d dove into it the way you and, and Paul has too, but 
Um, man, yeah, it, it just sounds like whoever has to finish them or work on them is uh, is another artist and in in, in into themselves, just putting ZBrush yeah. and everything else they have to do. That's, that's the, well, there it is, right there. That's that's the challenge. Is you can scan it, but then depending on how good the scan comes out, you have to fix it in the next program. Right. Right. And that's and where, it, that's where I am stuck. Well, and I mean, James got it down to a, a science, you know, that he was, you know, he was he was cranking those scans out so quickly um, or that, you know, the, the artwork. It took a little while for he and I because, I mean, he he came from the three dimensional world, the practical effects world of uh, model building. So James is an expert model builder. I mean, he worked with me at Legacy Effects for, you know, the whole time I was there. I was there for about 15, 16 years. Wow. And he was in the model shop and then he, he had left to pursue other things and then taught himself ZBrush. And, uh, you know, luckily I, I came, you know, I'm from that practical side as well and um, knew how to make molds just well enough. And so he and I would go back and forth and it's like, where can we split the molds? Where can the seam line be? How are we going to do the, uh, you know, how are we going to do the, uh, the cores? How's that's going to work? So, you know, mm -hmm. he and I would all the whole thing. And there was a couple, you know, the first one that Mike Epps uh, mold for actually that character that's on camera right now. You know, that was the first one that we did. It was the first scan we did and the first character that, you know, the mold came out. So we kind of like experimented with that one. You know, we each each mold we only printed once, but each mold we learned something new on. Right. Okay. So I love it. I, that, what a what a fun project. I, one of the things that, uh, and I think we talked about this last time we were at Monster Palooza, um, and we were talking about some of these. You know how you have to make so many of them, and I know each one's slightly different, but there's some cool tools now with digital. You know, uh, the, the scanning and then the, and the digital, the, the printing that you can couldn't do before. But right. speaking of Monster Palooza, to pivot, yeah, yeah. I believe you yeah. brought this guy. This guy to Monster Palooza, if I recall. Ah, uh, there we go. finished. Finished the uh, angry fish guy. It's, yeah, I love I love the progress shot because you know Paul and I are are still like just completely baffled by how this is foam and how you yeah. take and make this seriously foam into that. You know, it's like I wait a minute, that. it's insane. It's insane. Tell us about no, this guy. That, well, yeah, that's my little angry fish guy, and he's he's named that because. Uh, I, you know, what creature from the Black Lagoon, of course, is one of my favorite monsters. And uh, I was doing some doodles and I had about six or so different creature kind of caricatured designs on one sheet of paper. And uh, I asked my wife, Alona, and I said, which one do you like the best? I really want to build one of these guys, but I'm not quite sure. I kind of like them all, but which one do you like the most? Yeah. When she goes, oh, I like that angry little fish guy. <laughs> and I said, you know what That's that awesome. is, right? She goes, I'm not sure. Am I supposed to know what that is? And I said, well, it's the creature from the Black Lagoon. Of course, she's like, I've never seen that movie. <laughs> really? Yeah. This is, a, this is a Saturday morning or Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's exactly it. It's Sunday matinee. What do you call them? Saturday matinees? Exactly. <laughs> That's funny. I, I, love, I love the origin of the name. And I know this, you also brought... Um, Another thing to most please, if I recall, I think if I get my mouse to work, that this guy. Yes. And, yeah. and if you're looking at it for the first time, which a lot of our fans are right now, this is foam, people. This is made out of that foam and foam. Other, other pieces. But tell tell us what how this is amazing. If you this, if you go to Ted's one. Ted's site, you can look at all, all the progress shots. But this is what go ahead. Sorry, yeah. this is crazy. No, that, it, the one thing was, is I had designed that a while back, you know, the kind of the way it looks. And I it just always, you know, love deep sea diving helmets and just, you know, ghosty, whatever. But that original helmet was built for a uh, legacy effects uh, Halloween party, you know, during the day that we would always dress up. And so my wife and I did a couple of um, costumes for the Scooby-Doo monsters. And so I did Captain Cutler's Ghost. And so it was just a plain green helmet that I'd thrown together in a night. And she was the uh, the gypsy ghost um, from Scooby-Doo. Yeah. And so I'd had this helmet laying around in the shop for years. And finally, it was like, okay, we just moved. 
we live right on the coast now. You know, I've got inspiration. The water is right outside the front here. And so uh, I'm, I'm going to finally make my creepy uh, old uh, deep sea diver helmet. And so little by little, I started, you know, chipping away at that and adding on. And so most everything is is foam on this. Um, the, the little uh, frames around the, the lights. Well, I, mean, I can point to it here, like these frames here. So we had done uh, some costumes for PlayStation, and uh, these are actually the ring lights for the boots on Ratchet from Ratchet and Clank. So I just 3D printed out some more of those. Um, but everything else, like these are plastic. I had done a gang mold for the uh, thumb screws, but everything else is foam. So this is like foam rod and foam. These are plastic pieces I pulled out of the gang mold, but everything else is foam on there. And then uh, Alona found these really great LED lights that uh, I'm actually going to hook up to batteries tomorrow. So right now, hook that's them up running. tonight. I want to hook them up tonight. I want to see how it goes. Hold on, let me stop carving a pumpkin. I'm going to get my. <laughs> yeah, we can smell some burning batteries. Exactly. Ted, I, don't know if I, I don't know if I ever asked you this before, but how did you do the barnacles? The barnacles are just that was like one of the simplest things. That's upholstery foam. And yeah. uh, how did you? Oh, that. that. Yeah, of course. Simple, simple. So I actually, I put it on the, I just scribbled out like the, the outline of the barnacle and then tipped my bandsaw um, table just a little bit and then cut that out. So it's got like a beveled edge. <clears throat> okay. And then I just took an example <clears throat> and just kind of hogged out the little barnacle areas, um, did some quick carving and took like a, a little soldering knife and uh, scribed the sides here, and then did some latex caulking. Um, it, you know, up close, you can tell 100% what they are. But, uh, you know, just, I mean, and then just yeah, hit them with tell. the, I can, well, yeah, if you guys are, you know, up close, you can tell it's like, it's soft, it's foam. Okay. But yeah, from it's, it's beautiful. beautiful. I, I saw it in person last year yeah. when we were all in Pasadena, and I was like, I, I don't get it. How the hell did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> it's well, amazing. Thanks. Yeah, but, but it doesn't it, it doesn't stop there because you know I think when we talk about all of Ted's stuff and this also was a monster palooza and made a couple of appearances. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, again, foam. Um, and again, and we you know we, we were blessed to have him do a pumpkin that was that made its way to Monster Palooza um, oh, as up, well. Up there, can't he's see. Up, yeah, but I mean, I and and it's and it's these kind of things that just still are staggering to me. Like, you know, these are uh mm -hmm. like beautiful pieces and like like ted like you said earlier you don't you don't work small um no. you know, like working in, in decent size here and like speak you know just to give you here's a uh a, a good shot of of them together and yeah. i think we're going to get into a little bit about this guy on the right <clears throat> um here in a moment but um and let's go ahead and jump into this because <laughs> Tell us about now everybody who who we all you know have seen you on our show and we just you know follow your page but we've seen your Yoda and it and it's like you 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 take this guy around or you did in this case so tell us about this little trip you took with uh, with Yoda. I, he's, he's been on a couple of trips with me now. Um, I originally took him. This this picture here is when I was driving back to Wisconsin again right during COVID. My mom had been home alone. Um, hadn't seen a lot of folks. So I decided to kind of, you know, just, I'm just going to drive cross country, not going to fly and, uh, go spend a month with her. So on my trip from, from LA to Wisconsin, we stopped at a bunch of roadside, you know, goofy places, attractions. So sure. this was, um, alien jerky right outside of like kind of, uh, Las Vegas, I think. I, I think this that's great. And, uh, so we just stop and take pictures. And I had him sitting out there. It was kind of funny. I was taking pictures and somebody noticed and they started, he's like, wow, that's really cool. And they started taking pictures. Well, then I, I was waiting for them to finish and they were wondering, you know, kind of why I'm standing around. And uh, I said, you get your picture? And they said, yeah. So I picked him up and took him away. Like, Wait a minute. Can you take that? And I said, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know that. So. But yeah, so I, I stopped a bunch of places, took pictures, and then he was home for the whole month with me at my mom's place. And of course, we drove back, and but then he took a, a second trip. That, that was on the way back. So my uh, 
My mom passed away last January, but she had had him at his at her house for about six months or so before she passed. Mm. I was taking him for uh, an art show. Oh, that's um, great. Left him. Is this, left this him is home. Somewhere in Wyoming or Montana or that something is, like that. That's North Dakota. That's Jamestown, North Dakota. North Dakota. And uh, that's <clears> their, their big claim to fame. There is uh, this giant buffalo, the world's largest buffalo. <laughs> and uh, so we, of course, had a had a stop and look at the world's largest buffalo. I, this is this is crazy, but I love the way you framed his head in between the legs. There, it almost looks like he's like he's like glowing or something. It's it's really cool. I didn't necessarily do that on purpose either. It's really cool. Ted just finds gold in whatever he does. Yeah, every, every, he's like Midas touch, you know. He, he does. Salt, salt flats. There we go. That's the salt That's flats. Amazing. Yep, outside of uh, Salt Lake City. So yeah. Um, oh, that was crazy driving through that. It's a little bit, it's a little bit scary, you know, just on either side of the road, just those, those flats, but yeah, it kind of looks like Hoth. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can imagine because I mean, you had to watch out for, you know, 300 mile an hour rocket trucks going by or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. They weren't doing any testing that day, but, um, I'm trying to think where, oh, that was on the, yeah, that was, that's in Wyoming one morning on uh, a couple wow. of years ago. That's a beautiful picture. That is really cool. Like, <laughs> just gotten into Wyoming and, and shot that picture. It was about, you know, 6.30 in the morning, 7 in the morning, something like that. Yeah. How cool. Yeah. You, my trip. You, you talk, you, no, sorry. Go ahead. No, my trip was kind of extended because of all the stopping. I did to take pictures with Yoda. <laughs> hmm. Oh, rightfully so. I mean, we saw. Oh, of course. Yeah. The, the um, you talked briefly about like your ratchet and clank stuff. Yeah. Um, and so we've got a few pictures specifically. Like, I mean, now obviously these you can kind of get a sense of the scale. Yeah. Next to Alona, but but um, but like the the effort that goes into this to make it that perfect, um, I'm assuming is uh now this is probably her pulling a lot of that mascot work exactly forward but, but wow what a beautiful it, it beautiful was such a huge thing. job so i mean we were given all the digital assets from playstation and uh i mean right down to the eyeballs you know what size are the eyeballs and to create wow. vacuform bucks and the nose and everything alona did all the like the costume work and the leather work and uh we we got the 3d assets for the head and that was milled out of foam it was molded vacuform because we built two of these so we did two, two ratchets, two clanks. Oh, wow. And then, again, Alona is like the, you know, the, the perfectionist with the fur and the fabric. Um, really? <laughs> brilliant and all that. And she did all the painting, too. So all this great shading work around the eyes. And that's oh that's a brilliant wife. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable. Amazing. What, now, what, now, what is this character? Is that from, this, no, that's from the same game, right? Same same universe, same game. That's Clank, and Clank rides on Ratchet's back. Oh, most of okay, why, why didn't I not know that? Okay, I, I yeah, reason, Ratchet I is it. kind of a bandit, whatever he is. Uh, whatever. Okay. Silly Bandicoot? No, is that I don't know. Is that, don't that's, know. That's, that's Crash Bandicoot. Never mind. I don't know, man. Well, yeah, I actually yeah. built Legacy Effects. I, I built cra a Crash Bandicoot at Legacy. So <laughs> that's but, um, you know. It's just, yeah, video game characters all over the place. So, yeah, this is Clank. And, again, we were given all the 3D assets for this. And then uh, James Springham, again, who works with me, um, pulled all these assets apart. And then we started 3D printing all of the pieces. And all of those were molded in silicone and then cast again. And uh, the head and the body are fiberglass. Um, I think just the fingers are actually 3D printed. We never molded those. Everything else is either fiberglass or cast resin. What and then, what, what, what what use? But just this maybe dumb question, but like, they, they have these big pieces. What, how do they how do they use them? Are they, are they just on the These are, somewhere? Yeah, they're they're walk around characters. So when they do conventions and things like that, um, you know they 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 use these as walk around characters to greet people. Um, okay. We did shoot a video um, at the uh, uh, the game company is Insomniac, and they're in Burbank, California, and so we did shoot a promo video at Insomniac um, with the characters one day. So it was really great to be able to see them actually live walk around and. Oh, I bet. Uh, and interact. Yeah, actually, all your work, in, in, you know, in motion for, for once, as opposed yeah, to just exactly. sending it off and saying goodbye to it. Seriously. Yeah, just kind of hoping 
it's treated right. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. That is my my now buddy. I, I got to meet uh, Jeff Daniel Phillips when we did uh, the Munsters. I had never met Jeff before, and uh, he played Herman Munster for Rob Zombie's Munsters film that came out. I think it was last year. Yeah, and yeah. This was a really great job that my good friend uh, Wayne Toth helped me get uh, get this. He did, Wayne did the makeups for the uh, the film. And okay. of course, working with him all years ago at uh, KMB, he knew that I'm a muscle muscle suit builder, and um, so he called me up and said, "Hey, do you want to do Herman Munster's muscle suit?" And I was like, "You bet your butt, I do." <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and I got to meet Jeff Jeff Phillips here, and um, really great guy. And we built this in our Burbank shop, and you know, got to do all the test fittings and take it in for you know other fittings and Rob Zombie. And it was so great to be able to just talk to the director and. You know, was, hey, a little bigger here, a little smaller there. And, you know, can we do right. this with the muscle suit? And we tried to make it as lightweight and cool, and flexible for, for Jeff. And then I like, I, like his, I like his boots. I mean, that, uh, that those are great. Brings him up, up a couple inches. Too. Yeah. He had gotten those boots too. And he's already a tall dude. I mean, I think he's already like 6'3, six, 6'4. Six, okay. And uh, yeah, I'm 5'10. So you get a mm. good idea of how tall he is in his boots. That's cool. But, uh, yeah, he like would wear Matt again. What's oh. that? It looks like me and Matt again. There you go. <laughs> In this scenario, I'm you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you you talked about Rob Zombie, but let's talk about this zombie. Yes. Oh, oh look at that, that is one of my favorites. Yeah, I love that. Yep. This, I it's gotten better and better every time I've seen it too. <laughs> I uh, I was tinkering around with this character like years ago. I just quickly sculpted a couple of zombies out of upholstery foam. And uh, they were always laying around. And then my buddy Mark Tavares uh, reached out to me yeah, and said, Mark. hey, I'm oh, yeah, Mark. Yeah. curating a show at the Sugar Mint Gallery in uh, Pasadena, California. And it's all about uh, George Romero and zombies. And have you got anything that you would want to put in the show or have something you're working on? And it's like, well, this is the perfect push for me to actually finish my zombie. So again, that was a, a character I did here once we we did the move to the central coast and um, worked on him every night for a couple of weeks straight and uh, tons of fun to do. It was so oh, much those, fun. Those eyes, the, the, look, the look on his face is, it, it's just so good. Yeah, my, my wife, it, she has noticed and I, I, I do it with almost everything I design. It's always got like an askew mouth you know like the lip hanging over jaws yeah, kind of yeah. like a, and i try to put a sense of motion like you know jaws going one way and the eyes are going another way and yeah so, so i cool. i always try to you know put as much character as i can into these guys and again it's just all upholstery foam it's latex rubber and and uh tissue paper and uh cotton and and, it, it, in in 30 years of working on it to you know get you to to, yeah, to, I've, to the level of um, yeah. Anyway, I, when you talk about how easy it is, I just oh, it's just this or just that. I'm like, I don't even know what those are. I don't know what you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been snipping foam because it it's cheap, but I've been snipping foam since I was like nine or ten years old. So uh, I would go to like the uh, upholstery shops and you know beg, borrow, steal, never steal, but you know it's like, hey, can I can I have some upholstery foam scraps and. You know, they finally would give me some glue and tell me how to glue it together because I was literally getting just like scrap bits of foam and glue them together and carve and sculpt things out and kind of teach myself how to do that over the years. And, you know, yeah. it became the hobby, but it was, you know, once once I moved to L.A. and started working in film, um, you know, obviously we start sculpting in clay and, and molding in fiberglass or ultracal things like right. that, running foam latex or silicone, doing all that kind of work. Um, you know, but this has always been like a super fun hobby now between the film work and commercial work and TV work. I just kind of got back to my roots of doing all of this stuff in foam and latex. And, you know, it's, it's the way, honestly, they used to make things for like Lost in Space or uh, yeah. Star Trek and things like that, like the old 50s and 60s films. And, yeah. um you know, so it, it's it's really great to get back to those roots of just fabricating. You know, just yeah. just making stuff up. I love it. We we are getting close to time, so I'm gonna I'm gonna yes. rattle through a couple more. 
I hate oh, to say it. I hate to say it because every time I'm we're with Ted, we could we could extend like three more hours because we have. Oh, hopefully we're going to be with Ted a lot more. Yeah, he's our new, our new, 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 new host. You but, guys seem to need a third around here. Clearly, you know, you you did such a good job. You're already, you're already hired. This Tell us about that, this picture. This was I super that. fun. I I just this was kind of like a volunteer thing. Um, so that's me as the Wolfman, <laughs> and uh, my very good friend David Woodruff wanted to do this photo shoot and was working with this gentleman that's front and center here. And that's a uh, uh, Ron Cheney. He's oh, the, uh, the grandson of, uh, of Cheney Jr. And a great grandson of, you know, the, the Lon Cheney. Lon Cheney. What's that? Uh, yeah. And wow. uh, so he did this, did this. Uh, yeah. So his name's Ron. So yeah, the, the great grandson of Lon, of Lon Cheney. Okay. So that's means the Wolfman. They did the Wolfman makeup. It was him and uh, David Woodruff and Andy Schoenberg. And so they did this prosthetic makeup. And then the, the lovely lady is uh, Kayla Emerson, who's a good friend of ours now. And she's done some she, fantastic actress and performer. Um, but she also did a little bit of modeling for us for our, uh, um, our PlayStation outfits. So, but that's where I got to meet Kayla was on this job. And uh, do these really great black and white pictures, you know, again, with Cheney here and just to be the wolf man. And we shot this. At, it was cold. It was night. We were out in, uh, oh, which park was that? About, I think Balboa Park in, in L.A. Hey. And uh, so it was, just, it was just super fun. And then we went into the studio to do some, some other photos. And uh, it, was just, it was just a really fun time. That is so cool. I love. I love that. I mean, yeah. the, the, you nailed. You nailed the wolf, man. Yeah, yes. he did. I, you know, I just had to wear it. You know, that's that's David's. You know, that's David's work and Andy's work and you know the hair work and all that. I got to keep my beard. They they glued down the prosthetic over my mustache, and they just blended the uh, the crepe wool beard into my beard. They oh, had wow. to color my beard a little bit. I was a little bit too uh, old man wolf man. So they had a <laughs> they had a dark. <laughs> A little bit more of a random picture. That's you know, a random. Yeah, no, no, no. But I want to segue this one because yeah, please, Paul. <laughs> it's such a cool effect that you achieved with this, and the way that you got there through the process is the reason why I put this in there because yeah. this is the finished product. Now, Matt, skip one ahead because this might be my favorite picture of all time of Ted. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it was that. It was a super again. I just I hardly ever you know have a bad time making films. You know sometimes they're they're hectic and whatever. But uh, yeah, this character is John Carlo Esposito um, yeah. as Hippos in uh, the film Monkey Bone with Brendan Monkey Fraser, That's right. and uh, did this at Steve Johnson's uh, Edge Effect shop, and uh, they were they were trying and trying and trying to get John Carlo for this this you know, this part. And so that, that next frame, uh, that next picture was me. And so I did all the testing. I built the rig and did all the testing for the character. And uh, so we would send the the footage to Henry Selnick, the uh, director, and say, you know, this is what we're coming up with, all this stuff. And well, I was like chomping on cigars and all this stuff and doing lines from the thing. And he said, he came in the shop and he goes, hey, listen, we've been trying to get John Carlos Esposito but he kind of dropped out. I don't think we're going to get him. He said, if we can't get him, I want you to play the character. Oh. No, I'm not. <laughs> he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love what you're doing. Cause you're kind of like used car, car salesman kind of Bronx accent you're doing and you're chopping on a cigar. He said, I love it. And I said, well, wait a minute. Isn't Whoopi Goldberg supposed to be my sister in the film or, you know, hypnosis. He goes, what does it matter? He said, you're in hell. It's, you know, right. who, Brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter who you are. And I said, okay. And I mean, I got pretty darn nervous. And then all of a sudden, John Carlo was like, yeah, I'll do it. I can do it. My schedule opened uh, up. Okay. And then, of course, as soon as he said, I'll do it, I was like, oh, damn, I'm really wanting to do it. Yeah, that would have been so cool. That was my, that was my yeah. moment. Yeah. Nonetheless, it's an amazing photo. It is. It's it's would have been, been you would have done it, it perfectly. Exactly. It was, it was fun. Well, Ted. We've come yeah. to the end of another episode, and I, got I, I, I know this is this part's gonna kind of we're gonna kind of work through this part with you here at the end. But okay, let's tell the people if they don't already know. Now they need to know because you had an Instagram account that was foam faber, and you got locked yes. out. 
you had to I start got to get up. I had a, just just as I got ten thousand followers. That's almost oh. exactly a year ago. I think it was on Halloween. I got locked out. Oh. And uh, so it was just foam fabber. And like I said, just over 10,000 followers, super happy about that. And all of a sudden I get locked out and I tried and tried and tried. So then I came up with a new Instagram, the foam fabber. And uh, that's where you guys can find me now is the foam fabber on Instagram. Um, I've got a YouTube channel. I haven't done anything with, but I've got my old uh, mini monster Palooza that I did a couple of years ago during COVID. And uh, so all of those interviews are on my YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm on I'm on Facebook. Um, I've got an Etsy shop where I've got, oh yeah, look at that. I've got, I've got t-shirts, I got postcards, I got stickers. Look at that, I've got my Metaluna Mutant t-shirt. Hey yo. Uh, you know, so I've, I've got hey tons on. of stuff on the Etsy shop and it's open back up. So we had to find all the stuff in storage from the move for the Etsy shop. and. We finally were able to dig it out, so we opened up the shop again not too long ago. Fantastic! Speaking, speaking of Monster Palooza, right there, yeah, get over there and order some stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and Paul and I are right next to you again this year, Monster Palooza. Right. Oh, cool. Yep. I've got, I've got, I've got, we, we, we're at our table where where we can't we, again. The best part about being next to Ted at Monster Palooza is like is like the traffic. Ted knows everybody. Everyone knows Ted. When it comes to like, we look over like, oh my god. There's Norman Cabrera. Oh my God, that's Tom Savini. And they're just sitting there chatting. Like, yeah, you know, who's who in the world is sitting there? And we're like, just like, like a couple of like, you know, puppy dogs. Like, oh, please rub, rub off on us. It's, 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 and then, it's and then you guys are right next to me. So then I just go, hey, you should talk to the Carvers and Crater and be on their show. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just the shill for your show. And, and oh, vice you of are. Clearly, <laughs> clearly. And then all of a sudden I get pumpkin guts thrown at me for some reason or another from. Paul's oh, wait, 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 let's, let's see, wait, wait, let, let's see your pumpkin. I, I, I can't, we can't, oh, I, just, like, I barely can't got it. Go. Oh, look, and you were talking oh, about the, the mouth being skewed. Start. That's great. That emotion's yeah. perfect. Oh, yeah. And you got we'll, the skewed we'll, mouth. Yeah, we'll see, what, we'll see what it turns into. So uh, I love it. It's a hell of a start, there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, my, mine's, yeah, mine's 100 miles away. I've been, I've been looking at all your damn pictures. Paul, Paul is actually looking pretty done, dude. What's done? Dude, what's done? done? I'm not done, but I mean, like, you made some good progress. Uh, you I can still go a little. Uh, you know what? I was going to glue a nose on because you, the goblin thing, but I think I, I think this has enough juice. I can pull this back enough and kind of point. I don't know. There's a lot of work to do, right? This I'm blocking it in, but I'm going to kind of keep a lot of the skin and maybe put some ears coming out. Like he's got, you know, though, sometimes the goblins have that like cow, cow or something there, like a hat. There, yeah. Like a I kind of want to work that in, and, and so I can really do some undercutting, so it really sells the fact that this is like a hood instead of a. Oh, I like that's a great idea. Down here. Great we'll idea. My, mine, mine is like a mile away too. I'll, I'll, why not? Because like, come on. Like, all right. So wow, this oh, that's how oh, that, a, a white a white light. Anyway, there you go. So I, I did, I'm not even going to worry about it because I I'm so early in the process, but I I had a surprise <laughs> face on the guy's, you know, the look on his face. That's all. He's, 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 he's shocked. I totally forgot. What was the emotion? Shock. Shocked. Shocked. Okay. Shock. Right? Goblin. Yeah, okay. exactly. Sounds like the name of a punk band. Shock yeah. Goblin. Shock yeah. Goblin. We going. Going to see Shock Rock, Goblin, man. Rock Lobster. Shock Goblin. Something like that. That's it. Well, uh, you know. Well, well, Maddie, why don't you tell the people where they can find us as well? well. Hang on. We, let me, let me, let me, let's look at Ted's area a little bit more. Okay. Now, here's where we can find us. This okay. is... Uh, Carvers and creators, just you know, everyone here clearly likes, subscribes, or you wouldn't be here. But um, tell a friend and do all that garbage on uh, Insta, Meta, whatever. And um, yeah, exactly. We, we're really, really <laughs> glad to still be here after four years of doing this every week. And uh, anyway, and it's thanks to people like Ted, who are our, who are our recurring guests and, and and true friends. And we just can't thank you guys all enough for watching us tonight. Nice job. Well said. Ted, you got anything else you want to sign us off tonight, Ted? I don't do it. it wait, do I have something in my script? Am I supposed to? <laughs> <laughs> I'm off the car. Do it live. You called me, call me off guard. You called me off guard. Wait, is there something you want me to sign us out here? No. It's, oh. you know, listen, 
I love I, doing it. So I'll take you know, it this week, and you take I'll, notes, and, and you I'll can do it. Say, hey, if you're in the Los Osos, yeah. uh, Central Coast, California area this coming Sunday for Oktoberfest, stop by my booth and come and look at the classic car show. And uh, the really cool thing is about Oktoberfest, my uh, father-in-law, Roland, started that over almost 40 years ago. No so, way. How's that? Yep. How do you get into that? That's I don't, you, And you bring you in the start, Halloween aspect of it. I well, that's a good – I like that you did that, too, because that's a good point. It is carving season and Halloween season, and what we do is we make monsters and we get creative. So I will do the same thing. If you are in Massachusetts and in the Charlestown area at the Navy Yard – if you're from Massachusetts, you know what the Navy Yard is. There's a great bar called The Anchor, and I will be outside on the water. And I think it's going to be 80 degrees on Saturday here and sunny. So lucky me. So if you're down in the area, I will be there starting at 11 o'clock. So Okay. And I'll, since we're all plugging, I'm doing one, too. I'm, uh, I, uh, on Saturday, I'm in uh, the Scottsdale Quarter. Uh, I'll be carving like a madman um, outside where it'll probably be 103rd. No, it's it's finally cooling down. It's like 70 something degrees. So it might even be cooler here than in Boston for some reason. But come to come see me Scottsdale Quarter on uh in uh, North Scottsdale on Saturday. Two Beautiful. Five. And know what else? We got to do one more reminder. Get your carves in for the GPCC 2023, the Great Pumpkin Carving Contest. Got some great entries so far, and we will be announcing the winner, I believe, the 30th. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll do a little Instagram live or something with Brandy and we will announce who we believe is the winner. And it's a really tight race. There's a whole bunch of them, a whole bunch of entries that are pretty amazing. So everybody's doing a hell of a job. So get them in. You got a couple days left. That's it. All right. With that being said, from Ted and Matt and myself, we thank you all for joining us on Carvers and Creators. And we'll see you again next week. Good night, everybody. Happy Halloween, everybody. Yes, happy Halloween.